Magandang araw po sa lahat ng aspiring future criminologist po natin. And welcome to our criminology online tutorial. In this um, lecture series, um, special topics will be discussed in the different areas of the criminologist um, licensure examination. Of course, it will be discussed by yours truly, um, your mentor in this tutorial, Dr. John C. Villarmia. I'll discuss the, the general principles, the, the specific principles, the examination of question documents, and also the, the phases in the examination of question uh, documents. Okay, so first, these are the general principles in the conduct of question document examination. Take note that um, documents may be questioned, um, disputed, and attacked on many grounds and for um, uh, various reasons. So um, a question document examiner may encounter um, several um, documents that are um, in question uh, for several um, factors and several um, reasons, okay? And <clears throat> the second one is that one of the general principles is on the, the preservation, the handling, and carrying evidence. Oh. Take note that whoever handles or whoever receives the question document should um, preserve the integrity uh, that person, that custodian must not impair, okay? Must not contaminate, must not damage the, the value of the evidence. Meaning from the time that, that the person receives the document, he must preserve the original, um, original characteristics, the original condition of the document up the, to the, the last the, part of the examination of that document, the original physical characteristics of that document must be preserved, okay? Then, the third one is um, documents must be protected. Um, similar with the second um, principle that when you preserve, when you, when you care for a, a certain document that you have received, meaning you are protecting such um, document for any um, damages, for any um, contaminations, okay? And the last principle is that when a question document examiner conducts his examination, okay, such um, question document examiner um, will observe the, the basis of scientific um, examination. These are um, um, the sequences, okay? the step-by-step -step, um, processes in the conduct of um, question document examination, okay? This will be discussed on later part of this um, video, okay? So the first one um, principle is uh, about the, the reasons why um, documents are being questioned or why documents are disputed. And then the second and third general principle is uh, on the matter about the, the protection of the documents, the preservation of the general uh, physical characteristics of the document. And then the last one is the, the method, okay? the, the process of, of the examination of the document. Because when you conduct an examination, there should be a clear and a scientific um, way of, of conducting an examination. Okay. So next, we have here the principles of handwriting um, identification. First, take note, we are on the principle of um, identifying handwriting, okay? The first principle is that no two writers write exactly alike, okay? So wala pong um, tao or wala pong dalawang um, tao na, na magkatulad, okay? Ang kanilang mga handwriting, okay? Even um, a person no, cannot duplicate his um, own handwriting, okay? Second one is that um, the condition of the writer and his position at the time when he writes a particular document may affect the characteristics of um, his handwriting, okay? Take note, 
when when you are sitting, when you are standing, or when you are walking or the place, when you are writing on top of the table or when you are writing on top of the chair may affect, of course, the appearance of your handwriting, especially the 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 condition, the health of, for example, of the person. When you are in a hurry, for example, when you are suffering from a disease, for example, when you are hungry, when you are nervous, it affects the handwriting of the person. Okay, the third one is all about the the habit. No, the a person when he learned how to write uh, forms a writing habit. Okay, this third principle is that a writer cannot exceed his maximum writing ability, meaning his writing habit. Those um, habits of handwriting forms that he learned, he acquired from the past several years or months, okay? He cannot exceed, he cannot um, change that abruptly, okay? He cannot change, he cannot modify that um, um, instantly. He needs, of course, serious effort and training applied just to modify his um, change, his handwriting habit or his ability, okay? Next. The fourth one is um, the combination of handwriting characteristics. There are um, characteristics that can be uh, formed and can be examined by the, the examiner. So those characteristics of handwriting are essential elements of um, identification. Take note that we have the so-called individual characteristics and we have also the so-called class characteristics. Class characteristics, these are um, common characteristics that can, that can be observed in a certain group or class of handwriting. For example, the cursive style, and then we have also the block style. So those are um, common class characteristics. Okay, these individual characteristics, these this characteristics make, okay, make a certain handwriting different unique from the other group of handwritings, okay? So, ito po yung tinutukan um, ng examiner what makes um, a certain handwriting different from the other handwritings, okay? Number five is that individuality in handwriting can only be determined through comparative examination with a standard written or prepared under comparable um conditions okay so the the question document examiner cannot um uh, make uh, cannot cannot conclude that this this um handwriting is written by this person or this two handwritings were not written by the same person unless he conducted a comparative examination okay so so for example meron po tayong question document or meron po tayong question handwriting, for example. And then the question document examiner must obtain, of course, a standard. Okay, a standard specimen, a standard handwriting for him to be able to compare uh, the, the alleged handwriting and the standard handwriting. Okay, for example, the, the allegation is that this handwriting or this vandalism, this bundle on the wall, for example, there is that bundle. Uh, uh, found on the wall and it was alleged that it was um, written by a certain person named for example Villarmia so so the examiner for him to conclude whether or not such vandal or such handwriting was written by uh, Villarmia he needs to obtain a standard handwriting of Mr. Villarmia then if he obtained already the standard handwriting of Villarmia, that handwriting um, should be compared to the handwriting uh, to the vandal, which was alleged to be written by a certain person named um, Villarmia. Then that's the time that uh, he will examine first and then make a comparative examination. For example, he will um, observe the 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 features, the forms of the alleged handwriting and then the standard handwriting 
and then make a conclusion whether or not the the alleged handwriting were written by the same person on Mr. Um, Villarmia. Okay, take note, ang standard po natin is written by Mr. Um, Villarmia, for example, and then the, the, the question handwriting was alleged to be written by Mr. Villarmia. And then if the examiner found out that the characteristics, the forms, the several characteristics were seemed to be similar, in that case, uh, probably the examiner will conclude that the the handwriting, the vandalism, the vandal was written by Mr. Villarmia after a comparative um, examination. Okay. <clears throat> Take note also that similarity does not mean identity. Not in all instances that when a certain characteristic is similar to the other handwriting characteristic, the examiner will conclude that there is. Uh, identity, meaning two documents were written by the same person, not all the time. There should be, okay? Not all the time. There are instances that they are, they may be similar at first glance, they may be similar in some instances, but there are unique and distinct features that makes that document different from the other document, okay? And the last one is Complete identity means a definite forgery, okay? When upon examination, the examiner found out that the, the handwriting, for example, or the signature are the same in all aspects. The size, the circular form, the, the shading, okay? The slant, okay? The spacing. Even the period that, that that's for letter I, okay? If, if that is the case, then it should be a complete and a definite forgery. Because if we will go back to the first principle, no two writers write exactly alike. And even a person, me, as a person, Mr. Villarmia cannot duplicate my own handwriting and own signature. You can try, okay? You can try try to write or to sign two signatures and then look at observe the difference okay they may not be similar the same in size they may be similar in form but they are not the same in size okay next classes of question papers we have there may be a question signature there may be um, fraudulent alterations Holograph documents, question or disputed um, documents attack on question of their age or date. Um, for example, as to as to there are instances wherein a document is presented. For example, that it was for example a uh, a land title. For example, um, was um, released or obtained in the year two thousand, and upon examination of the paper, um, there is an issue that such paper was not okay was not manufactured in the year 2000 but such paper was manufactured okay in 2005 or in 2010 for example so there is that issue okay the age of the paper and the date so it will be impossible for a certain land title to be released or to be made in the year 2000 when such paper used in the reproduction of that land title was not manufactured on the same date, okay? So the same way documents attack on the question of materials used in their production, yeah. Documents investigated on the question of type, writings, or computer prints. And then um, writing is investigated because it is alleged that they have um, identified some person through um, handwriting. So there are many um, many classes of question papers, okay? Meron po tayong papers, um, question as to, as to several um, uh, markings, clips, okay? With the end, stampads. So principle in the care handling and preservation of question documents, we have, um, it should be cared for in a manner that will not impair the slightest degree of its value as um, evidence meaning the the custodian or the person assigned to 
to handle, to preserve the document must bear in mind always this principle that he must, okay, preserve the integrity of the document as discussed previously in the, the first part of this uh, lecture. Okay, because if that person will not um, care for, okay, in a manner that will impair, of course, the document, improper or careless handling of a disputed document can compromise the forensic um, examination. Okay, it can compromise. It can affect, of course, it can affect the result of the examination. Okay. So when you are handling, uh, uh, when you are handling a document, okay. For example, we are handlers of documents. We are assigned as re recipients or receivers of uh, documents. These are the things that should not be done. Do not use staples, pens, or clips. Okay. When you receive the document. And then you are afraid that such document may be lost. Then when you clip, no, it's a no, no. That documents, if hindi na kastipol, then do not staple. Do not use pens. Do not use clips because the clips will what produce mark on the documents. Folds, okay? Make perforations. What is a perforation, okay? What is a perforation? So perforation is like making a hole on the um, the document. Okay, similar with cutting of um, documents. You, uh, documents to be um, perforated using um, a document puncher, for example. Do not uh, do that. Okay, create new holes if if the document um, is not fold then do not make new folds if the document is fold in a half then do not make it one fourth okay do not fold the document so in short to sum up this one the don'ts in handling documents um leave the document as um the original no? leave the condition of the document or preserve the condition of the document at the time that you have received Okay, do not make colorful art alterations, do not underline, do not color the words, do not underscore, do not highlight, then do not put um, documents in your pockets. Those things or meaning things that will damage the document should not be done. Okay, all actions, all um, actions that can damage or contaminate can affect the value of the evidence, the person assigned to that must not do those um, things, okay? Another is do not allow other suspect to handle or see the disputed um, document, okay? Then allow anyone other than a properly trained forensic scientist to make chemical or other tests. So um, those are, um, kumbaga, on the in the in the actual examination there are instances where in the a forensic scientist or a trained forensic um, examiner um, may apply um, chemicals or other tests of the documents but this test these chemicals will not damage the the document okay ano po ang kailangan natin gawin if we are handlers of documents so kanina the don'ts these are the dos mga mga bagay na dapat natin gawin if we are assigned to handle the documents okay use envelope for storage and transportation we have uh um we need uh pwede tayong mag photocopy we can photograph or scan the documents as required but take note that when you photocopy you do not use the auto feeding uh, photocopier Okay, do not uh, use the auto feeding photocopier. A uh, photocopying must be um, done manually. Okay, protect documents from excessive heat, light, or dampness. Then prepare a complete history of its document showing the date, place, and from whom it was obtained. In our criminal investigation, this part number four um, speaks about the chain of custody because a single or a one document 
may be handled by several persons and different times and different dates. So the handler, the custodian of that document must have the logbook of all the things that were done uh, uh, about the, the document, okay? Then number five, handle the documents as little as possible, okay? The document evidence must be examined first before it is suspected to additional or subjected to additional forensic examinations, okay? So, uh, para bang um, before um, a certain um, document may be, may be submitted for forensic examinations, the, the document must be examined physically first, the physical condition of, of the document, okay? So, examination of documents uh, in road classes. We have uh, two um, classes in the examination of documents. We have first the criminalistics examination. And then the other one is handwriting um, examination. So what is a criminalistic examination? Criminalistic examination of question documents is similar to other kinds of police work. Okay. Take note that um, a criminalistic um, examination involves only the 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 um, examination applying the 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 several um, or applying or utilization of several criminalistics um, equipments, particularly in question documents. In this case, the examiner will detect whether or not there are um, alterations, there are changes, there are additions, there, there are substitutions of the, the letters in the document. There, the examiner may determine if there are changes in the in the content of the document, okay? It is a scientific procedure which can be learned in a very short time because um, criminalistics examination involves um, equipments. So once a person uh, learned how to manipulate, how to operate several um, forensic equipments, then he can detect if there are alterations, there are um, fraudulent changes in the document so it can be learned in a very short um, time while for handwriting examination this is the more difficult procedure and it requires long range uh, study and experience the reason for that is um, recognizing the handwriting of other person easily doesn't mean that it is a simple matter to de detect um, forgery in handwriting okay in our face-to-face -face classes, for example, or in our class, or maybe, maybe we we can be familiar with the handwriting of our friends, our classmates, but it doesn't mean that we can identify, okay? We can detect immediately um, forgery. The the reason, the 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 the, the primary reason why um, handwriting examination. Or handwriting identification is difficult is that um, no person ever writes a letter exactly the same every time evidence or the proof of this statement is that you can compare your handwriting when you are at the age 20 for example or when you are at the age 15 if you have still the documents uh, the handwriting when you are 16 when you are 19 when you are 20 when you are 25 you can compare you can compare your handwriting okay and you will learn that you did not write a letter the same every time okay so these are the things under um, criminalistic examination the examiner may detect forgeries alterations or um, obliterations why while in handwriting identification the examiner may detect authorship or the person who wrote a particular hand writing or document okay next the last part is the scientific handwriting um, examination the phases these are the first we have the analysis analysis um, this is the part where in the examiner will recognize the characteristics of the the handwriting so Kung baga, um, examiner must observe 
the class, and the individual characteristics. So there will be um, notable um, forms. May mga forms po ng handwriting na obvious for the examiner. What makes that form different from other handwriting? So in that phase, in that stage, the examiner will note down all the things that he has um, observed about the individual and the class characteristics of the handwriting. After knowing the um, individual, necessarily or essentially, the examiner must learn the individual characteristics, the unique, the distinct characteristics of the handwriting for him to proceed to the next stage or phase of the examination, comparison. Because an examiner cannot compare uh, handwritings if he doesn't or he, he did not um, uh, obtain um, several unique characteristics of the question handwriting. So, so once he obtained or once he learned several um, unique features of that um, question document or question handwriting, then he must this comparison of the recognized characteristics. Of course, those um, characteristics must be compared with the standard handwriting. Kagaya ng example natin kanina, if there is an allegation that a particular handwriting was written by Mr. Villarmia, then uh, the examiner must obtain the standard handwriting of Mr. Villarmia. Then he will, the examiner will compare the alleged um, handwriting and then the standard handwriting. And then after that, if na compare na po lahat, of course, when you compare, there will be um, opinions, there will be conclusions, there will be evaluation. Okay, the third part is um, the examiner will interpret his um, um, findings. Okay, this is um, a sort of conclusion under evaluation. The examiner will form his opinion, or shall we say, his conclusion whether or not the two handwritings were written by the same and one person or these um, handwritings were similar or these handwritings were not written by one and the same person that is the third phase okay and then we have also this um v okay the a stands for um Analysis, C stands for comparison, and E stands for evaluation. After um, evaluation, in evaluation, the examiner will formulate his conclusion. But um, in this ASB methodology, hindi po, hindi po nagtatapos sa evaluation. So pwede po ang examiner is, he will allow other um, persons to, to do the same, to do the examination, or to validate his um, findings. This V stands for verification. For the examination to be valid, those um, several experts must have the same or similar findings and conclusions for the result to be um, valid. Okay. Take note that this um, basis of examination was um, popularized by um, Roy A. Um, Hoover. Okay. Take note that this is not only applied in question document um, examination because this ASV methodology was uh, um, primarily applied in the conduct of examination in fingerprint, okay? Fingerprint examinations. ASV methodology is uh, usually used, but this is also applied in the conduct of, of question document examination, okay? So... If, um, if you have um, questions, if you have um, clarifications, um, you can personally message me regarding this uh, lecture. Okay?